If you take a group of children in care, around half of them are likely to have problems with their mental health. Four times as likely as children who aren't in care. Being in care might mean living in a children's home or with a family member under a care order. But to help us understand why mental health is important throughout the system, we're going to talk about foster placements like mine. Mental health problems are sometimes progressive. That means that if we don't do the right things at the start, the problems just get worse and worse. The longer we leave them, the more expensive they are to treat and the more painful they are for everyone involved. When you are struggling with your thoughts and feelings, you can sometimes do things or say things that are hard to understand. And this so-called challenging behaviour can be misunderstood and puts a strain on the child carer relationship and can eventually lead to foster placements breaking down. A broken placement is where a carer feels that they can't help you anymore and might even worry that they aren't cut out to foster a child. Or a child comes to the equally difficult decision that they're living in an untenable situation and that they want to leave. It means crisis support will come in and try to sort things out. It means a new placement has to be found and if challenging behaviour is seen as the problem, perhaps a move into specialist foster care or a children's home. These are sometimes expensive options, but more importantly, having a childhood without a dependable caregiver makes it harder to trust people. Before I was 16, I moved house 25 times and had 15 different foster placements. You can start believing that it's your fault. Like you don't deserve to have someone who cares. This kind of instability is the exact opposite of what a vulnerable child needs. When placements fail again and again, we have failed. And we risk a carer giving up fostering. Or a child just giving up entirely. At the NSPCC, we believe we all have a responsibility to break this cycle. We've spoken to lots of people and done lots of research. We looked at what works and what really doesn't. And this is what we found. Firstly, everyone is different. Support must be personalised if it's going to work. We can't apply the same approach across the board. If you want to help children, you have to listen to children. When we use existing screening tools properly, when we are able to make emotional well-being part of a child's health assessment when they enter care, we have the potential to do this really well. You can't fix a problem until you know what the problem is. The key to improving emotional well-being is more training for carers, more communication for everyone and more child-friendly therapies across the board. Providing carers with expert advice from mental health professionals on how to understand the thoughts and feelings that drive the behaviour of the children in their care. Means that we feel safer, more cared for and more able to trust people. Encouraging communication between departments and professionals. Helps them to work together better. And better support each other and the happiness of the child. Getting some emotional support without it feeling like a hospital appointment and offering counselling as well as creative and social activities that can help build relationships and self-esteem. Means that we find it easier to get the help we need and easier to deal with what we've been through. And when we do all three, train, communicate and offer child-friendly support, we find that the cycle of despair doesn't have a chance to begin. Saving placements means saving children from feeling like they've been rejected again. It means saving foster carers from feeling that they have let a child down. It means saving on crisis teams. And new placements. And all the other stuff when you move. But most importantly of all, it, it means, means saving, saving lives. lives.